Texas versus Georgia, boys. We're going to show you the best way to use Texas with their glitched playbook. This is Texas's offense. And then we are rocking Texas defense as well. Uh, full ebooks are going to be on the school side. If you guys are not a member of school, it's only 10 bucks to sign up for that as we fumble the ball first play. But we do get to keep it. All right, I'm going to show you how to set up their depth chart super fast so you save uh, time. This is in Road to College Football Playoff. You're going to go in. You're going to auto reorder. You're going to go to wide receivers. You're going to put Bolden at the number three receiver, Isaiah Bond at the number one, and Ryan Wingo at the number two. You're then going to go to left end, and um, you're going to put – or I'm sorry, right end, and you're going to put Akana here. You're going to put Trey Moore at DT – or I'm sorry, not, or I'm sorry – uh, Colin Simmons at DT, Trey Moore here. Left outside linebacker is going to be Gillette. Middle linebacker is going to be Jabenda. And then right outside linebacker is going to be Hill. Corners are going to be Isaiah Bond and Xavier Fosame. And then slot corner is going to be, what's his name, uh, Muhammad. Now, if you have a little bit of extra time, you can go to this rush left end and kind of optimize this. Uh, a little bit more. What I like to do is Akana here. I'm going to put uh, Jabenda here. This is for double mug. We're going to do Trey Moore, Colin Simmons. And the sub linebackers for double mug, you want Gillette and you want Hill. So that's pretty much the fastest way to set up your depth chart with Texas. Only to, and you could definitely get this in within two pauses if you kind of know, like, okay, we're going to make sure that we're going to put these guys here. Obviously, you can optimize it a little further if you're playing in money games or tournaments because you could use our 6-1 ebook with this team. With Texas, 6-1 is the best defense in the game. Not even close. Um, it's actually better than double mug. I do think double mug, the more that I use it, I think double mug is probably the best defense for all game modes. Um, but I think 6-1, if you could choose, 6-1 is better for uh, regs. We're also running this WAV trio. I really like this formation. I like to set all go. We can put base here. Uh, and then really the two goal line plays I like, goal line fork, zig, and goal line short post. Those are pretty good plays. And then we're just going to run out here. So the only hot route you have to do to make this post shot play like good is you just have to take the running back off a of play action. You could block him. You could drag him. Like, you could do whatever. Another little mini scheme that I would use with this team is the stack Y off. And these are kind of the audibles that I do think are probably the best. Um, and then you could put, like, flood or levels. Really whatever you want here. Probably the RPO uh, is probably the best. You know, just something here. And then the tight open, kind of an underrated formation. And I totally accidentally, I'm going to have to call timeout because I, I forgot I was on the play clock here. But the tight open speed option, tight seams, and then you can pretty much go from there. But you don't, I don't really ever go to those. I mainly just run this trio. I think this trio is really good. It's kind of like, uh, it's essentially um, a simple version of trips. So love this little high-low read here to the left side. The running, you know, I, what I like to do is basically, you know, play fast, play play uh, simple, and just try to out execute them. If they start, if they start blitzing me or screaming at me, there's a little bit, uh, there's a lot of other things you can do. But play action blocking is basically the best way to pick up a lot of the blitzes in this game. This is what road to college football playoff is, man. Because you can't save your depth chart, you can't save your audibles, you can't choose your playbook. Like people just are all over the place in this mode, and this would be such a fun game mode. Like. I would probably play this game mode, no joke, like at least 12 hours a day if you could, if you could choose your playbook and you could save your depth charts. And you're, it'd be awesome if you could choose your playbook, save your audibles, and uh, save your depth charts. To me, those are like very basic things, but they truly would make like a huge difference. I think he's going to run cover two here, so we should have a touchdown. And... Quinn Ewer is going to stand up for himself, make a big play for the, the squad. I don't know what that was. It looks like he rolled into a cover three, but he showed cover two. Let's just come out and quick hike him again here. It's such a simple play, but it's such a good play. Let me see here. 
There's R1. So it looks like he's kind of running like a cover three cloud almost. But this formation is good because it pretty much bombs every coverage in the game. Like it's, there's not a lot of coverages that you're not equipped here with, which I really prefer that. Looking for, take the running back out of the backfield here, a little spin move. Texas has a really good, I mean, the roster is just so good. Like they have the best, they don't have the, the only thing they don't have the best of is quarterback. But like corners, they have really good corners because you can sub those guys in. They have um, a really good running back. Baxter is uh, really pretty good. I have him wide open. I just couldn't throw it. And then they have Isaiah Bond. Isaiah Bond is Isaiah Bond is him on this game. I mean, he's really good. He's good on offense. He's good on defense. Uh, this goal line play is super good. I'm gonna do the wheel route. Do a little crosser left got my in route this short post route is what makes this offense I mean, it's not it's not the only good play in the formation but it's one of the best plays in the formation i need to actually change this actually no i'm good goal line unders goal line unders probably one of the best man beating concepts in the game and then you have goal line this goal line fork zig play this play is is zeus in the red zone there's so much you could do with it but you have this nice running back route I love this play. A lot of times your tight end's going to be open, but if your tight end's not, didn't get enough time there, but R1 was coming open on the sideline. So it's super good two-point play. You can run the ball out of it, of course. Um, they don't have a lot of under center stuff in this playbook, but you do have that, that uh, formation, that stack. That's really good. I'm going to be running double mug. I do think double mug is probably the best defense. I just feel like the six man out of du double mug – is honestly just I just don't feel like it's a good it's a good um, it's a great defense. Okay, I want to come out in nickel dog three two, and I want to be on my slot corner, which it won't let me. The game won't let me. All right. The reason I want to basically be on my slot corner is I think it I think so so we we have a full ebook on this this defense in the school site that explains everything of how it works. But what I think really is helpful is to try to turn this into as much of a 6-1 base defense as possible. So there you see you scream. We'll pick it. I don't know how we dropped that. Trey Moore almost made the play of the year. But you see how good this blitz is. And this is not the only way to run it. There's, there's multiple ways to run the blitz. I really wish that I could just send six and it would be better than it is. I don't feel like the set... I feel like the 7-6 is much better out of 6-1 than it is out of this defense. I'm going to try it right here, though. Kind of see. I'm going to stand opposite running back. I don't even know. I don't know where to stand either. Like I, feel, I go back and forth all kinds of different ways to stand here. A lot of times you get this disengaged. There you go. And you see, I mean, like, it's just like – let me just cl I'll clip it and I'll show it. So, like, we're sitting at six people. I think, he's, I think he does block somebody. Yeah, he blocks – oh, he blocks both his tight ends. That's probably the best way to pick it up, honestly. So he did max pro, which is what you want. You want them to max pro. I actually really feel good about these adjustments right here. I just got to take away the corner out to the right. I'm going to try to just basically run down my user. There we go, scream through the A-gap. Yeah, that's perfect. That's like the perfect performance of the defense. It doesn't happen like that every single time, but – if you it, – it does, depending on the – it just depends on how they, they block it up. We're going to do another game with you guys. All right, boys, game number two, we've got ten or uh, Ohio State. Ohio State, probably the most broken team in this game, but in order to college football play if they don't have Wildcats, so it should be, like, not as terrible. Wildcat is just an absolutely insane form with, uh, with this team. Shouldn't have brought that out. I don't feel like kick returns were that good for me. All right, so I'm going to show you how to set up the depth chart one more time, just super quick here. He'll probably unpause me, but – you know, basically just auto reorder, go to your wide receiver first, put Bond at number one, Bolden at number two, and Wingo at number or Wingo at number two, Bolden at number three. Left or uh, right in, you're gonna sub in Akana. And then DT, you're gonna sub in Simmons, and then at the back of DT, you're gonna sub in Moore. Left outside linebacker, you're gonna sub in Gillette. Middle linebacker is Jabenda. You see how I'm saying? You can do this really fast when you kind of know like what you're looking for here. And then we go down to slot corner, and this is going to be Muhammad. 
sub linebacker is going to be Hill and da, 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 wherever Gillette is. I lost him. Uh, rush defensive tackle is going to be Trey Moore, Colin Simmons. Rush right end is going to be Jabenda. And rush left end is going to be Akana. So you see, we did that pretty quickly. And then if you really wanted to, like, you could put your – I would put Baxter at – I would put your running back at um, – Kick returner. Of course, I'm messing this up. We're going to get caught here. But you just – you can settle this up super quick when you kind of know what you're doing, and then it just makes the game a little bit more easier to replay. Let's see. It does look like he's kind of setting up some some pressure. We're going to take a quick flat. And the cool part, again, like I said, is you have, you have the best blocking from play action. So that's one of the real reasons why – our main play in this offense is a play action play because it not only does it have a good route, right? Of course it has a good route, but also just has uh, the ability to break down coverage and uh, let's see if we can throw this nuke. This is why this play is so good. As you see right there. I mean, Isaiah Bond just takes the top off the defense. So you have all of the routes necessary to, uh, basically throw absolute lasers, and then you also have kind of the the blocking that's very, very helpful. Speed. I like this draw. I really do like this draw. And I'll show you kind of some red zone stuff here. So another thing you can do in the red zone, because you come out in trio every time. It's like a system. Come out in trio every time. But then I can audible, for example, to stack way off. And now look where Isaiah Bond goes. See how he goes to that jet sweep position? We're able to go here, and we're looking to run this really with the quarterback. One of my favorite red zone little mini schemes is just basically that with the jet touch pads, the fake jet. And then if you wanted to, you could put the inside zone and just have it coming back across the other side too. But you just th – this just gives you like a real simple scheme that works for road to college football playoff because they, they screwed over the playbooks. So I've been wanting to do this for you guys. I, I would, at first, I felt like Wild Trio, like it just didn't have the routes. But the more I played with it and got it right, I think the, the better it ended up coming out. So we'll see if we can get the defense going here. Now he is – we're going to put these on conservative just because he might run a lot of read option uh, with his team. And we might have to get out of 6-1, honestly, if he does do that. And I think I have everybody where I want them. We'll see here. Now he doesn't even have uh, Judkins in, which is super helpful. Look at Sky. And we're screaming. This is why Double Mug is so good. Double Mug is so good with Texas, guys. It, it, it's just it's so good with Texas. Texas takes every defense and makes it uh, elite. Texas is the best. By far, it is the best team. Um, for Or the best defense. So that is important. Got a lot of stuff open there. Good routes or just, just kind of pressure broke down and he's able to go. I thought I'd say, like, I wish you could send – I wish the send six from this was more like it is in 6-1. That's why I think 6-1 is ultimately the better defense because in 6-1 you're, you're just set up a little bit better to kind of be able to cover the whole field, defend the whole field, be able to defend the run better. 6-1 defends the run better. 6-1 defends, you know what I mean? Like, it just does a lot of stuff like that for you. I'm going to try to send the goons here. We're going to run out. That's why I like that three wreck. I like – what I really like about this defense is you can shade down on this three wreck, put your user in a flat, and this three wreck will just guard a lot of stuff. doesn't guard everything. I'm going to stand over here, kind of bait this running back. He might be throwing the running back. There we go, super scream. And that's what you need from that six man. Like when they block that running back, you need that six man to come in. That's the key to the, the whole defense. Like the defense is so good if that one thing is true. If that one thing is true, it makes his defense elite. All right, good D, fourth and two. Good route, though. He got a lot of yards on that. I'm telling you what, though, I don't like – the way the deep half. Oh, we just got to get out here and make a tackle. I did not 
expect that animation. Sim, I'm gonna go back to the Sim Four. He's starting to really. So when they start to abuse the flats, I like to go to the Sim Four and just use those hard flats. I think those hard flats are tough. Because the cool part is with the defense, kind of the way it's laid out. You know, you can play. The alignment's not bad um, when you use with the slot corner. And then if these hard flats can get, I can actually see that's why this team is such a glitch. Look at my entire team just dumb out. You gotta kind of expect that when you play Ohio State, but if the flats can get out enough to make it so that this slot corner can be in the middle of the field, it really does help a lot uh, in terms of how the defense is gonna function. All right, five wide receiver trio. Probably gonna be a jet sweep. Probably to the right side. I'm going to leave my user blitzing here. He's going to throw it. And there's the hook girl. Good. It's good defense. So you see, like, why double mug? Like, if you use her the slot corner, it makes the blitz better because you can really play more middle of the field. You can just kind of, like, okay, 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 awesome. I can't believe that. I, I <laughs> cool. Uh, literally stopped at the inch yard line. I don't know how we didn't. How's that on a safety either? Whatever. We'll be thankful for it. So the cool part about the speed option is it completely flips the formation, basically. So you now are running more right side. And then the speed option out of here is pretty good. Baxter and Baxter's really a good bat. Baxter's a really good back. He's he's probably one of the he's not as good as ETN, but he's probably like top five back in the you're not top five. Judkins is one. Might not be top five back, but he's a he's a good back for the for the scheme is what I'm trying to say. Love this route. I love this tight end drag too. Another thing that you can do, and I've talked about this a lot, and not a lot of people have really been listening to me. One of the best things you can do in this game is use the route stems and stem these in routes super low or super, super deep. They get a much better cut against man as we just take the top off the defense again. Wingo on one end, Bond on the other end, 96 speed, 98 speed, and we just fly. Now, we normally go for two here, but we are in a position to be able to take a two-possession lead, so I'm just going to take my field goal. Kind of just put the pressure on him after our defense got a got a good red zone or goal line stand. But if you guys want to learn, I don't just I mean I don't just do ebooks on our school side. I actually started doing a lot of different things to try to provide more valuable more valuable information to people. If you want everything that you need to get better at the game, the school side's only ten bucks and it gets you unlimited access to everything for college and for Madden. So both games for just $10, you get access to all the eBooks, all the pro tips. I've been, I'm even been doing like film reviews for people uh, of members, kind of so that we can all learn from each other. Wanna do more of that, because I do think that helps kind of flesh out like the scheme, but kind of shows like it's not, nor normally it's not the scheme's fault. Normally it's the execution that needs to be improved. But anyway, if you want to get that, all that stuff's access uh, by joining the school site. And it's, only, it's like I said, it's only $10. To me, that's, you know, for 10 bucks, I can give you information that will win you hundreds of thousands. Like, it will win you at least hundreds of dollars. It could win you thousands of dollars, um, depending on if you're competing or not. That's good D. Just tackle. See, that's why I like the four. I probably, I probably could sit in the four-man. I think, seriously, if you just did this setup right here, nickel dog, three buzz, pinch your D-line, crash your D-line down, hard flat both of these guys, and just literally ran the defense like this, you'd win 90% of your games. Maybe more. Um, it's such a simple defense, but it's such an effective defense. That, that disengage is so valuable. It's so good uh, that you want to kind of leverage 
leverage that. Watch that tight end route. We'll send everybody this time. And now we got the defense has him in a punt situation. I'll go like that. Kind of playing a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, I just I don't feel like this. This is probably the best I've seen the six man. I feel like in I just haven't seen the six man be that effective. But it, it actually it, it, last couple games I've been running with the Texas, it has actually been more effective. But I feel like the six one six man is better. Uh, just because of the way the crash, like the way the, it's hard to kind of explain, but like the way the offensive line engages with 6-1 is slightly different than double mug. And what it ultimately results in is the engagement point from 6-1 is going to be a little bit sharper than the engagement point for these uh, A-gap blitzes. It's super hard to explain. It's kind of in the weeds, but that is a, a big truth. And you see, I mean, that's why I like this play. Like, it's extremely versatile play. Like, you have quick reads. You have, you have um, big play potential. There's other ways to run the play than what I'm doing here, too. You have some of the best capabilities of motion because this guy being on the line of scrimmage allows me to do things like, like right here, he's showing man coverage. You know, so maybe I want to do, like, a tight end slant. And then one of my favorite routes would be to put this guy on a speed out. And we're just going to motion him in, and we're going to stem him up pretty significantly. And we'll have a kind of almost like a double corner. Didn't work there. Did not. Nothing got open there. I, I, I also don't – that's where I – I don't know, man. I don't know about Bolden. Bolden, he kind of just doesn't – sometimes Bolden just honestly sucks. I'm not going to lie. Let's go – I'm going to try this. I've never ran this combo. But I think this could work pretty good. This is a true double corner. Really looking for square here. Have square. Good read. I really like the speed outs, though, guys. I, I think the speed outs are so good. One thing you can do, so, like, if you go to this goal line fork uh, zig play, you can – you can you when you hot ride this guy inside, it's gonna make Bolden the speed out, so you can put him on the speed out to the line, motion this guy back out. Now, you know we could run a combo like this if we wanted to. We're really looking for Bolden on this on this deep out. We actually have him. We just get screamed at. One of the most underrated routes in this game is a stemmed in route. I'm telling you guys. This route is truly one of the most slept on routes in the game. We're just gonna run it here. Boom. And you see how it gets like, like I didn't possession catch there. I should have possession caught that. But you see how it kind of gets like in this really soft spot. So like if I wanted to, I'd go go in fork zig. I'm gonna, so this in route's gonna be deep enough that it's gonna clear out the deep third zones and stuff. With, for the crosser underneath of it. And then we can just run something like this. And we'll use a C route. If I have time in the pocket, he actually had a good user there. Normally you would kick here, but we'll go ahead and go for this, just kind of showing off the scheme. Kind of the way he's been usering. Another thing we could do, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to that play and I'll show you something really cool that you can do with this. So, again, this is going for Zig. The reason we call this play, a uh, couple, couple different reasons, but one of them is we have this running back route. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to block the tight end because he is showing some pressure, and I'm going to stem this in route. But I'm also going to be able to put this speed out here, and then we're going to slant this guy. Love this combo. And look at this speed out. Can I catch that? Very nice. That's a beautiful throw. That's why I like those speed outs. You can, you can stem those speed outs to about 15, 20 yards. If they're isolated, it's really hard for the defenders. It just puts, the, it, it puts them in a, a really strenuous position to try to defend you. And then you could go to something like this goal line for Zig. You know, let's say you're more like red zone or goal line almost. You can still utilize the speed out. So what I can do is really basically the same thing. But what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this 
kind of route that circles on. So I'm going to motion him back out. And for some reason, it did not register. I don't know why it's not registering. Huh, it's not registering. Uh, that's fine. We'll just, we're looking for the tight end here. And we have him. We have him. We just did not get a good pass lead, unfortunately. I didn't realize, I just realized I, I scored that last touchdown with zero seconds. I didn't even realize that. I was like perfectly clocking. But I mean, you see, like this scheme definitely has potential to beat the best players in the world. This, this wing trio week, when you start to do some of the little things that we're going to explain in the ebook, and you start to understand like how the routes break down, all the coverages in the game, it really puts the defense in a bind. The the, the basically the hardest thing to consistently beat from this formation is man coverage. Like a, like a set and six man blitz, I find that to be the most difficult thing to beat. Uh, but I don't find it to be impossible. And, and I do think you can consistently beat it. You just have to have the right, as I just see, this is, this is an example of like nickel double mug being worse than 6-1 fundamentally. Because 6-1, those linebackers, just the way the blitz works and just the alignment of the formation – those linebackers would be able to shoot out and contain that a little bit better. Um, when they're defensive linemen, they don't do that as well. So it's like little things like that that I think makes a big difference when we're talking about is this the actual best defense or is it very similar to another defense and maybe not quite as uh, effective. Now here, a lot of people like to run this bubble screen. So I'm gonna be looking for this bubble screen or stretch. I would never run a counter in that situation, but we're good. We get the stop. We get not the stop, but we're still we're still up two possessions, which is really key uh, to our success. Hopefully, he'll run a little more main coverage. I'll kind of show you how to break that down. That's the one thing I feel like zone. You're like golden. Like you can bomb every every coverage. This this scum kick is actually killing me. You could pretty much bomb every coverage here. You also, like, I don't really run the ball a ton, but you do have some really good run plays. Like, you, you have some really good run plays. All right. We're going to go to this speed option again, just kind of situationally based on what he did last time. I actually think the draw, let's, let's actually go to the draw here. I think the blocking on draw plays are, are, is actually really good in this game. Let's see if we can run this. He, like, ran backwards. <laughs> he kind of did us a favor. I just didn't want to have to pass that close to the end zone. Do I have – I don't know why plays. Okay, good. So, like, if they're running a lot of man coverage, my favorite thing to do is to really use this speed out. This isolated speed out, I, I'm telling you guys, like, a lot of people don't believe me, but it is so good. Um, just a simple combo like this. Watch the speed out. Look how much separation it gets against man. And it doesn't uh, – the speed out is kind of an interesting route. I'm pretty sure that this speed out is not going to get pressed. So, like, if I put wing – let's say I put wing – especially if I put this guy on the speed out. So, if I put Wingo on the speed out, he's pretty much never going to get jammed, uh, which is really, really cool. You know, so you can just run like this. And look, look, look at the space. Look at the separation. Now, one other rule for the offense, notice what we're doing. We are flipping this consistently to the wide side of the field. That's just the best for the formation. Um, it's just, I mean, it's pretty much universally agreed on that short side trips in general is not the most optimal way to run trips. Okay. So, again, here, so you see how he's going to, see how there's no one covering the slot? That's my cue that I could maybe potentially run this corner route. So, we're going to try to do a little combo like this. This combo has potential to um, – it's actually a really good defense. I almost – I should have thrown – ah, that was just ah, – it just got me. He almost got me there. He should have probably gotten a pick. Um, so this is where, like, every now and then you want to mix in this all-go play. Uh, and the, re the purpose of this all-go play is pretty much to – make it harder for them to play cover two. And he got the pick he, des he deserves. He deserves that pick. I just, ah, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have called that. 
Honestly, I shouldn't have called the play. He kind of just, I don't know. I don't know what the cloud flat was doing. I thought I would assume it was a cloud flat. The cloud flat kind of played the streak a little better than it normally does. Ends up getting the touchdown. And now he's kind of finding himself back in the game, and he really shouldn't be. But we got a little cute offensively, trying to showcase this showcase things. And just got into a bad play call. That's why, like, you want to be. You kind of want to know your play call when you come out in the line of scrimmage as opposed to like, oh, let's try this now, and you know what I mean? Then you get slow. You want to know your play call, trust your play call. I'd really like to recover this. I don't know why I can't recover this or catch this stupid kick. That's really kind of driving me nuts. Let's go Niblet. Niblet might be him. He ain't him. All right. I also should be able to bomb kind of what he's doing here. So kind of way he's kind of calm plays. You should be able just to quick throw. Yep. Okay, so now this is a situation where you can kind of set him up. So the way he's kind of calling his plays, um, we're going to kind of take advantage of that cover two. So we're going to run a table route here. And then I think what I'm going to do is run this. I'm really looking for, for square. I don't have square. I'm getting hummed at. Yeah, he's kind of putting me in a position where I'm going to have to, I, I don't know, the, the cloud is playing a lot better than normal. Um, let's, let's block the running back this time. We'll slant this guy. I'm going to go back to that speed out and kind of put him in a lot of conflict over here to the right. So you see, even though, like, he does have a flat zone, he doesn't have a deep enough flat zone to be able to take that away consistently. We're able to just kind of work that out route um, in this situation. Probably just going to run the ball here. He's just kind of playing a little bit odd uh, just in terms of how he's kind of calling his defense. So we're just going to try to see if we can just exploit it with this base. A lot of times these heavy defenses, which I am kind of setting him up for here, I'll show you what we can do. So, again, this is cool because it's like only one click. But I just, I'm just i right into jet touch pass. And jet touch pass is really hard to guard uh, or hard to defend in double mug just because it's such a, such a compressed E. So you see here we're getting that nice seal. And now we're kind of giving him some little – I call these like constraint theory plays. These plays are just basically out there being the purpose of their, them even being called is just to let him know, you know, okay, if you're going to super load the A gap, I can go to something like this, you know, pretty simply. I wish I had a screen in this playbook or this formation. I don't have a screen. I don't have, like, there's a lot of things that this formation doesn't have that would really help uh, with everything. Okay, so so you see how he's kind of spreading his line out. It's going to make the blitz a lot worse. So we're just going to try to call this. Now he's back, kind of back in that cover three, which is weird because the cover two has honestly been the best thing he's done. I'm trying to think how I want to break this coverage down. So every now and then it's like you see how kind of situationally like he's doing this. So, again, this is where I love to utilize this, this speed out. And we're going to use kind of a significant stem on this. We should be able to pick this up. See how he has to go over there with his user. He's a, sec a second too late. I, sh I was actually feel like that was actually a little bit more covered than it really probably was. Like it looked more covered than it was. I threw that a little bit late. He actually made a little bit of a decent play. You know, but I think you can see what we're getting here. So now we have Isaiah Bond in this position. So we're going to go to this jet touch pass, try to see if we can't just get on the edge here on this on this double mug. And that was actually incredible. I don't know. I've never seen that before. Never, ever seen that before. That, that shoot that he just got where he just ran right through the middle. I don't know what 76 is doing. But he might have to get cut. But we're up by eight, so we do need to get a stop here. And I wish we could get the same – scummy kick he's getting but he'll just catch it i don't know why i can't i'd honestly rather him if he's gonna score just score this is not a bad thing uh because it ensures that i'm gonna probably get the ball back 
The other thing about Texas's playbook is they have four four split and they have this goal line uh, five three. So you have a decent goal line set if you need to get into something for the goal line. So he's probably going to run uh, jet sweeps. I'd assume here. And we're going to hum at him. He's going to throw right at everybody. I, I just don't know how that's ever completed. I really am kind of amazed at that. Here I'm going to use it as safety. It did not work. <laughs> okay, he scored. <laughs> All right. That's, that was kind of crazy. That did not work out very well for me. So, situationally, with this defense niggle dog, three buzz, it is a match. It's a matching cover three. So, sometimes I'll mix in some cover three match uh, within it. Um, I'm kind of jacked up here, though. The linebackers are not where they're supposed to be. Yeah, that didn't go well. That did not go well. I was supposed to man that up. Oh, that did not go well. Uh, I just kind of got all uh, – so that's why I hate the coverage shell stuff. Like, when you're having to check your defense – see, I don't know how that goes through me. Like, this guy has just perfected this kick, bro. I don't know how that's going through me. I feel like I should be able to catch that. Okay, kind of situationally, we're going to need – we're going to need some kind of, like, cheap – I call it like cheap plays. Um, we got a speed option here. We got a QB wrap. I'm basically just looking for uh, runs that can exploit him a little bit and like quick screens. We're going to call a timeout. But I'm just mainly looking for like kind of key little audible round a little bit and just kind of put him in a position, like a tough position. Looking for RPOs mainly. Stack, trio. See, the problem is their formations, they're just not, they're not like, they just don't have a lot of bubblegum um, type formations. All right, quick hike. Good read. Baxter being him. See if I if I had like a bubble like even a slip screen like just something I should be able to get a cross like a cross screen but obviously you see he's kind of playing a little bit more aggressive so that's where like going to something like this puts him in a posi uh, kind of a tougher position it didn't work <laughs> but you know just something like that to kind of just give him something different. Now, I haven't gone to this play at all, but this is one of my favorite plays. Um, I'm going to motion block. And you see, like, it's unfortunate that I dropped the pass, but, you know, basically, like, I might go to this bunch set. The, the running back Texas routes, I think, are, the, are some of the best man-beating plays. Yeah, I've got this play flood, and I never go to this play. This play is this play is actually really good. Cause you see how the tight end is not being pressed. Can I put him on a speed out? I can't. Gosh, that's why you don't call. <laughs> that's also why you don't call plays you haven't labbed in a, in a situation like that. So right here, just kind of the situation we're in. I need to go for this. And if it looks like I'm not going to get it, I'm actually going to run back and, and basically take a sack at, like, the five. It just makes sure that I'm going to get the ball back because he is tied. And, honestly, he's kind of, in my opinion, kind of getting lucky. And we're going to go to this super deep out route. That. I'm actually going to run a deep cross. I'm really looking for the out route, honestly. I feel like I kind of have that out route. Quinn's going to overthrow it. Gosh dang it. Uh, Quinn Ewers might have just sold the game. Okay, so basically with my strategy, I should not be in this situation. It's really frustrating that I'm in this situation. I should have never called that play, and that's where nickel double bug can just be really good. I was kind of too scared of man, but I'm trying to let him score. 
I'm trying to let him score or stop the run, either one. But I'm, I'm like, playing super aggressive defense. Like, I'm playing hard flats, soft squats. I'm, like, there's, like, no deep zone on the field. Like, we're trying to force him to score. Um, or throw a pick underneath under super heavy pressure. You know, that's kind of the idea here. So you see. See how that's like a hard flat? Like he throws right into a hard flat. Like that's what we wanted him to do. We weren't able to get the stop because the game is interesting, but. That's a hard flat too, guys. That's a hard flat sitting over there that he throws that he threw it at it again. So now we're kind of in an interesting spot. We really need to get a stop here. I'm actually gonna do this. I'm actually gonna send this guy. I'm gonna stand right here. Basically I'm gonna switch stick off of this. He's in biggest three. So we are going to at least get the ball back for the offense. It's kind of unfortunate. I mean, he threw the ball at hard flats literally every single play. As you see right there, I mean, I don't know how that's not an interception. Like, oh, okay, we are going to go for it. Okay, that's fine. I am going to kind of same defense, basically. My camera angle's all messed up. We're just going to dot. We're just going to bag here. So we know the pressure's going to scream. Um, that's not open. That's objectively not open. That's really bad for the game that that was completed. I should have sent four, too. Look at all these yellow zones shaded underneath. Like, I just don't know how these hard flats and these, these yellows don't do anything. Like, look at all these yellow zones. I don't know how that's a dot. I, I, all right. Well, at least we get the ball back. We'll see if we can score. I just don't. What his, his entire um, – I, I just – I'm going to return middle, just see if we can catch the ball. So I have 16 seconds left. I need seven points. I have no timeouts. So kind of like situationally, we're not in a great spot. Baxter could have got it. I don't know. Dude, I feel like Baxter is injured. This wear and tear system is the dumbest thing that I've ever seen in a football game. I hate it. I think it's the one, literally like one of the worst things I've ever seen. But whatever. Use a corner out here. That should be a dot. Can I just get out of bounds, please? We should have a shot at this at this um Oh yeah we did we did. Okay. Really looking for Isaiah Bond here. Can I break a tackle please just one time? That should be out of mounts. So we did, we did exactly what we needed to do. Um I think we can get this. So basically here's the idea. So again, we're going to go, gosh, the, the play clock literally just dies. Like, look at this. I can't move, bro. Game on the line. We can't move. Looking for R1. Have R1. Catch it. Very good. That's exactly what we wanted. We are going to go for two here to try to get the win. I feel like if we went into over. Honestly, I kind of feel like going into overtime. Not going to lie, but they're going to tell us to go for two. We're going to go for two. So we're going to go with this goal line fork stick play. It's been pretty much open all game long. Really what I want to see, can I just put Wingo on a speed out? I feel like the speed out is going to be there for me. I really do. So I'm going to just hitch this guy, and I'm going to basically just try to block the tight end here. Short cross. Let me snap. That's a dot. That's a dot. GG's. 
We got it done, boys. Not the prettiest way to end the game, <laughs> but we are able to get it done in the end. This offense is super good. You see kind of the power of it when we needed it the most. We weren't playing super good in the second half. The defense was there. It just felt like we just couldn't get off the field a lot. But in general, that's what I'm doing. If you guys want to check out the full stuff, it's on the school site, school.com slash Cody Ballard. Link is in the description below.